are talking to four-time Grammy-nominated singer and songwriter Kim about the pitfalls he endured prior to getting the big break. Kim openly reveals in his memoir, Share My Life, a journey of love, faith, and redemption about the struggles with addiction and homelessness and many unspoken battles. Um, and, and one of the battles, many, many of your battles led to you eventually just getting kicked out of the house, right? Yeah. Your parents couldn't deal with you coming home drunk and high. Dad put you out. You end up on the streets, and then yeah. you end up in shelters. Yeah. What yeah. was that like as such a young man, too? Yeah. I left my parents' home when I was 19 years old. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the first few weeks outside of their home, I was, you know, flopping around in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know, at friends' houses. And, and that only that only goes so far. Right. Hiding bags and yeah, your things bags, so people you know. wouldn't know that you were homeless because yeah. there was a shame there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And uh, and so I ended up, my, my first stop was uh, a place called the South Oakland Shelter, mm -hmm. which was uh, probably five, ten minutes car drive away from my parents home mm -hmm. and uh, and I remember on the first the first night I was in the shelter uh, the administrator and it, it was a shelter that was housed in a church and the administrator came to me and he said and he recognized how you know I'm, you're not I was just a kid mm -hmm. and he said you know whatever it is that you're dealing with you know you need to go ahead and 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 and, and deal with it and get to the other side of it or mm -hmm. else you can end up in this place, in this cycle, for the rest of your life. This is you playing the piano yeah. at one yeah. of the shelters that you stayed in for at one period of time during your transition, yeah. right? Yeah. It feels like, as a, a reader, I get the impression your time in the shelter is really the first time you ever really started sharing your life, yeah. where you had to go to meetings and yeah. talk about what that was like. Yeah. Is that yeah. true? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I spent. Uh, I spent a few years in, in in and out of different shelters mm -hmm. and then it eventually there's an adage I love that says when the student is ready the the teacher appears July 23rd of 1990 I'm sleeping outside of the back of uh, the back of the Salvation Army and um, and uh, and I and I and I you know I, I came to a place of surrender you know and I gave mm -hmm. up the idea that I could solve my problem with the same thinking that brought me into the problem in right. the first place, and uh, and I met some people who who, who helped me to uh, to to start my walk in recovery, my walk of faith. And this this is after hitting rock bottom. Absolutely. This is after committing crimes and doing things that yeah. you did not want to do anymore, yeah. because you still the, the conscience was still there. Absolutely, and still pricking away at you. Yeah, yeah. But in that redemption, because that's the, the bottom line of the story, right? You decided cold turkey. This yeah. is it. No more drugs, no more smoking, no more alcohol. How hard was that for the folks out there who deal with that? Actually, conversely, I did not decide that hmm. I was not going to use anymore. I gave up on the idea of, I knew that I couldn't, but I also knew, I knew that I could not continue to live the way that I was living, and the freedom it was in that I didn't, I didn't know how mm -hmm. to get sober. Mm. I didn't know how to get sober. If I had known how to get sober, I would have done that. You know right. what I'm saying? I didn't sure. know. I didn't sure. know how to. I didn't know how to get clean. So I, I prepared a way. I prepared my heart to receive the teaching that would be necessary by letting go of the idea that I could control it. Mm -hmm. Right. And and when I did that, and when we do that, when we surrender, no matter you know whatever whatever we're dealing with in our lives, when we surrender. When we surrender, we make room for God to come in and do his thing. I saw well, at your concert recently yeah. here in Metro Atlanta, you said, God is not done with me yet. No. And in your book, you say that your sobriety is constantly tied to prayer and yeah. meditation. Yeah. This is an ongoing, this oh, isn't just a, oh, that was 30 years ago, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. This is yeah. ongoing, it's right? On, it's, a, it's ongoing, yeah, yeah. The maintenance is, is, the maintenance is definitely ongoing, you know. And I don't regret my past, because look, while I was in, the, I was that picture. I'm at the piano. Look, yeah. when I was in the in the darkest season of my life, I was writing songs. Right, mm. I was at the piano cultivating the chords to Brother Man and Matter of Time right. and, and Inside with that, that Al Jarreau in your head right, you know and Prince saying, and that, Michael right, Jackson right, right. and yeah. everybody. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but th in the coming out of this, though, at yeah. some point, you just happened to sell 
thousands of CDs. I mean, you finally get to a point where you, you, you have a breakthrough. Yeah. And you press your own CDs, so to speak, like back in the day, and you're yeah. selling them out of the back of your trunk. Yeah. That persistence is what caught the eye of Motown, of Motown right? Yeah. Explain. Um, I, you know, I, I, American Express had obviously mistaken me for somebody <laughs> else <laughs> and gave me a business saying, line of yeah, credit. Yeah, you can get those line of credit. And I recorded my first album. You know, and I recorded my first album, the Chemistry album, and, and my manager then, Toya Hankins. You know, we we hustled, the, you know, classic Detroit hustle. Mm -hmm. You know, we sold we sold ten thousand, we sold seventeen thousand. The right. goal was to sell ten thousand, and we sold seventeen seventeen thousand CDs on our own. And then uh, eight months after I released Chemistry on my own album, I was sitting in Kadar Massenberg's office right. in New York City, and uh, and you know, and, and we haven't looked. And back. you had two songs that you could perform for him, right? I, I performed it. This Place and uh, and Love Calls. Love Calls. Right. And here yeah. we are. And here we are. Here we are. All right. When we return, I want to talk about that moment of fear, the breakthrough yeah. and the breakdown. Yeah. When you have the contract and it's like, okay, this is it. We're yeah. about to move forward. Yeah. And you broke down. We'll talk about that. Absolutely. All right.